Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we'll take a look at database replication. At first we'll take a look at what is database replication and why is it needed. Then we'll look at two types of replication, synchronous and asynchronous. Database replication means retaining multiple copies of the same data. You keep the same data in multiple databases. These databases that keep copies of your data are called replica. You can read data from these replica. You can also recover data from replica if your master database gets destroyed. Let's go through a real world example. Say a user submits a form with some user information. The user's browser hits our backend server with this data. The server then writes the data to the main database so that it is persistent. This is where replication kicks in. Let's say you have two more replica databases. Your main database will also write to the two replica databases in different machines. Now all three of your database will have this user information. Now that we know what database replication fundamentally is, let's see why do we need it. The first reason is lower latency. Now that you have your data in multiple machines, you can use all these machines to read data from. That means when the traffic in your website is very high, you don't have to worry about your one master database getting bombarded with requests. The traffic will be distributed among all the replica. That means requests will have less latency as they don't need to wait for one master database to serve all requests. Hence, latency is very low. The second reason is keeping data close to your users. Let's say you have an application that gets used by people from all over the world. Now you have three replica, and let's say the three replica are in three different areas, one in the US, one in Asia, and one in Europe. Given all these databases have the same data, you can make your users read from the database that is geographically closest to them. A user from Asia should hit your Asia replica, and a user from Europe should hit your European replica. That means your users will get the data they want much quicker as they don't need to travel the whole world to get what they want. The third reason is data safety. This is the most obvious one. Let's say the warehouse where your master database is catches fire and all the database machines are destroyed. Having a replica means that you can quickly recover all your data and function at full strength even if such a catastrophe were to happen. There are two fundamental ways that replication can happen, synchronous replication and asynchronous replication. Let's take a look at both, starting with synchronous replication. Here is a flow for synchronous replication. Your server writes to the main database. The main database then writes to the replica database. The replica database acknowledges back to the main database, confirming that it wrote the data safely. And finally, the main database tell your server that the write was successful. Now both your main database and your replica database will have the same data. The key part here is to note the blocking nature of the write. The server has to wait till both the master and replica has the data before returning a response to the user. This means the write operation is slightly less performant because we are waiting for this replica to confirm. Your main database and your replica can be in two separate continents, one in the US and one in Europe. So this latency can be quite high, but at least when the server returns a response to the user, we know that the data has been safely written and replicated. So what are the problems with synchronous replication? There are two main problems, slower writes and chances of write failure. Let's take a closer look at both, starting with the problem of slower writes. As explained above, the server has to wait before the replicas have confirmed that they wrote the data correctly. This means your write performance suffers. Let's look at an example. Say you have two replica, one in the US and one in Europe. And let's say your main database is in Asia. As you can see, the two replica take different times to confirm that they received the data. One replica takes around 100 milliseconds to confirm, while the other is taking 20 milliseconds. 
So even though your main database has written the data successfully, you still have to wait 100 milliseconds before your server can move on to the next request. This is with two replica. Imagine when you have more. This delay might be much, much longer. Now let's look at an even bigger problem. Let's say one of your two replica is down for some reason and it cannot acknowledge. In that case, the whole write operation fails. We don't consider that a successful write, so data is not persistent. Imagine when you have more than two replica. If you're doing synchronous replication for all, any one replica being down would mean your write operation fails. This is a huge problem. The trade-off that you make is you know that even though your write may be slower and sometimes your writes may fail, but for every successful write, the data will be reliably stored in all your replica. Now let's look at the other approach called asynchronous replication. This is the flow of asynchronous replication. Your server writes to the main database. The main database then tells your server the write was successful. After that, the main database writes the data to the replica without needing any acknowledgements. So the key difference is that this time the write to the main database is not blocking. As soon as the data has been written in the main database, your server can move on serving another request. The replication in the replica is done in the background. This is awesome for write performance. No matter how many replica you have, you don't have to worry your write performance won't suffer. However, the problem is data inconsistency. Unlike in synchronous replication, we are not making sure that all our replica have written the data successfully. So different replica might have different amount of data missing. So what's the main problem with asynchronous replication? That would be data loss. Let's say your replica database is down when the write happens. Now your main database will have the data. However, the replica won't. Now imagine having more than one replica. You can imagine the situation being much worse because different replica will have different amount of data missing. There are things you can do to reach a compromise between write performance and minimizing data loss. However, that's outside the scope of this video. We can talk about that in a different one. There you go guys, that's pretty much all there is to know about database replication. If you like the content, please leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I'll catch you all on the next one. Bye bye.